Yo, yo, it's ODB, the Lincoln Addict. Welcome back to the show. Thank you so much for all the support. If you're new, please consider subscribing. I'm trying a new service out here. Let me know what you think of the production value. I want to jump right into it. As you know, uh, if you are a return viewer here, I can't thank you enough. Uh, Please consider subscribing and make sure you check out Lincoln Addict Podcast. Uh, However you find podcasts, or you can go to lincolnaddict.com. Uh, to find ways to listen. Now, in this series, what I'm doing is I'm going through these different listing reviews, and it's, number one, to cover the listing itself, to talk a little bit about some of the things that you need to be aware of if you're looking to get into one of these Lincolns or this one in particular, which is for sale. In addition to that, looking at some different things um, in particular about these cars that you need to pay attention to. Now, I'm calling this the OCD Lincoln. We'll get into that. And if you can, stick with me to the end, and I'll tell you what I think this car is going to sell for. It's a 63 Lincoln Continental convertible, and uh, this car is for sale right now on Bring a Trailer. So let me jump over here if I can go to the right screen. So now... Full disclosure, this popped up earlier today. I forget how many hours it's been uh, for sale, but let's say, you know, right around noon uh, Eastern time. Of course, I get the email, which I love about Bring a Trailer, and as soon as I had a chance to click on it, it was already at 40000 and then I think it bumped to forty five. Now, this car, I just got home, so we're talking seven, eight hours into this auction. It's already at 75000 so if that's any indication to where this car is going to go, uh, I, I would say that's a great thing. Now, basically what we're seeing here is a 63 Continental Convertible. I'm going to go through all the pros and some of the things as well that you want to be aware of, including some of the things that are not 100% factory correct on this car. I do believe it's going to appeal to most purists, but it's also going to appeal to a lot of people that are maybe looking to get one of these cars. So I think this is a this is a very special car, I think, in a lot of ways. So uh, we'll look at the rear um, three-quarter shot here. Uh, you, what you're seeing is a car that is listed as Riviera Turquoise Paint. So we'll talk about that and, you know, maybe some of the changes from the factory uh, as it relates to that. Here is a, a, a very iconic shot. I love this photo of these cars where – you show the, the the deck lid, you know, typically you're retracting into the trunk or it could be going up either way. But it's that cool photo from, you know, 10, 15 feet away kind of showing that top uh, as it, you know, either goes into the trunk or comes back um, up, if you will. One of the standouts on this car that I want to talk about, and I'm going to show you some insight uh, to... Uh, about this interior is it's just a crazy awesome interior now it is custom so i totally get that some people are going to look at this they're not going to like the piping they're not going to like the green Uh, there's going to be some things that they go hey i wish it i I think i've already seen some some comments about this you know i wish it was factory Uh, i will certainly tell you this is a high-end interior so we'll talk about it the bench seat was replaced um they took about you know the reupholstering there Uh, So, you know, some of the padding and whatnot uh, that you'll see when we get to that point. AM, FM, radio, it does. This is an AC car. Uh, In addition to what you're going to see, there are a ton of receipts with this car. And I went through, I spent like 30 minutes reading through on my lunchtime today, each, almost every receipt. And there is a ton. Now, I think that they accidentally duplicated a bunch of the receipts. So if you're happy to go through that, you're going to see that. But there is a ton done to this car. It's all documented. And the person, someone meticulously, the shop, went through this car, and I think it's pretty cool. Here they're just talking about kind of the basic stuff. It does show 65,000 miles. Now, from this view, I'm going to zoom back out. You've got the MEL 430, which, of course, was used from 58 to 65. You have a beautiful engine bay. Very, very nice. The undercarriage is very detailed on this car. Uh, it's it you could if you look at the the photos pretty close um it's been resprayed you know it's been cleaned up there's some wrapping around the exhaust which we'll talk about we'll break down the vin here in just a moment there's some of the high level information that bring a trailer breaks down 
And then these are a couple of the videos that the I believe the seller has placed into the comments. A Bring a Trailer does a great job with grabbing those links, and then they hyperlink them here. So I'm only going to show you a couple photos, and then I want to jump over and show you what I put together. Again, I ask if you can stick with me to the end. This is really a stunning car in a lot of ways. It is not 100% factory correct. I totally get that. And I do believe the company's name that you see on the rear license plate, I uh, do believe they might be brokering the car for the person. Uh, regardless, this is a, a, a super nice car in a lot of ways. So here are a few photos with the top up. We can see that classic Continental script on the back. There's a little bit higher um, resolution image than what I showed you just a little while ago. What I like to call the money shot there, especially you don't see a lot of photos like this in these listings where it's kind of a low angle shot with the suicide doors open. In addition, I will tell you, if you think about the picture quality on this listing, it is amazing. And you know that's a testament to either who's brokering this car or in some examples, it could be an owner that decides that he or she is going to hire a, a photographer. Now, um, again, what I want to do is I want to go through the typical information I share is this is my spreadsheet that I put together. I'm still filling in some of the blanks, but basically if you look there, 63 Lincoln Continental convertible, so green in this row. We know there's 3,138 produced for that model year. Give or take uh, August to July-ish, uh, you know, I don't have the exact dates for production start and end. I'm looking to get all that information, but give or take, that'll play into the production on this device or on this car. Now, this is a screenshot I just took from Haggerty. I am a Haggerty customer, and you can see there the concourse condition tops out at about 111,000. We've seen cars go well over that. I think that's a good barometer, but you have to keep in mind, again, just like with Larry Highbloom's car, his car had a lot of money in it, and it went for 150 grand, and really it could have went for more. So just because you see 111 here doesn't mean that, hey, that's that's the most I would pay for this car. I think you're going to see in this one, it is, it's, it's truly an amazing car that someone took a lot of time in. The serial number is listed there, which we're going to break down. This is just high level for me. I do believe it's a very nice car. It's a convertible, slightly customized, but it's not overly done. And again, I said this a minute ago, it will apply. I think it's going to appeal is the better word to most people, including some purists. I have seen some comments where they go, well, I, I wish it was this. I wish it was that. Listen, these cars are, of course, uh, you know, they're, they're the owner's cars, so they can kind of change them as they want. We will also look at um, a video, and I'll share a part of this video on social media, the YouTube by J.E. Robeson uh, service who did the interior, and they may have even done more work on it, so we'll look at that. The Lincoln Registry, this image, um, of course, I searched, and the gentleman that runs the Lincoln Registry had already updated the listing. Now, it was entered back in May of 2019, and for those that don't know, you could just Google or go to the uh, LincolnRegistry.com. It takes a second to load, but he had already seen this listing and he had already updated uh, with this comment here. It was reported in January 2008 by John Rando. The, uh, the 83 LCOC directory shows Jack Donahoe or Donahue in California. And then he had added this comment uh, in February 2024. And then this image was here. I haven't talked about a lot of these, but a lot of this is the build sheet. So you could think way before computers, you had these like ticks and, and, you know, as it was going down the assembly line, there were certain things that were done. Um, you know, th this, this was the build sheet. This is how they knew what to put into the car, you know, the colors and things like that. Uh, we know that to be true because you can see this 406233, which matches. Very cool. These are very rare. And I do believe sometimes people will find these under their seats. I've seen some people say that, you know, they took their front seat out and they had flipped it over. They were getting ready to get the interior done and the build sheet was there or it was under the dash or behind the carpet. You know, rarely, you know, someone will come back with, with the, one of those type of stories. Uh, so high level, if you've been watching this, I like to break down the VIN, although Bring a Trailer does this as well. For those scoring at home, 
The VIN number is listed up here. So the number three before the Y is the year. So that's a three. The Y is the assembly plant. All of these cars were built in Wixom, Michigan. As John Cashman liked to reinforce to me in the past, it was the sister car uh, to the Thunderbird there in Wixom. The body style 86, four-door convertible. It's a male 430 engine. And then the digits always start with a four. So here you have a four zero. So the four is just the beginning of it. You ignore that. And then 06233, it's the 6,000. 233rd built for that model year. And you can see down here the tally that is out of 3, 31,233, which is the combination between the sedans and the convertibles. Uh, we can further break this down. So just want to show you, I love bringing a trailer because they always show us this image. Don't always see this on different other sites. And I love seeing this because we can get a look or a glimpse, if rather, um, at what some of these different codes are. Uh, what we have is 74A indicates the four-door convertible. This was originally ermine white. So that code M uh, sig uh, signifies ermine white. Of course, it was repainted, which I have listed here as Riviera turquoise paint. The trim is 84, which was beige. Uh, it's now custom, but it's very, I'd say, similar. If it had been changed to black, for instance, it'd be totally different. The date, 11K, we'll look at the next slide. 52, this is the DSO for Los Angeles. I've talked about this. Anytime it is a non, uh, what's the word, salt belt, weather belt, rust belt. There you go. Non-rust belt type place. Even though a car could have stayed inside its entire existence, uh, you certainly will typically see the DSO's 52 or the California for Oakland and whatnot they'll be even elevated because, you know, it's like, wow, it's, it's a it's a warm climate place. You know, if it was there its entire existence, that's just a good thing. And then the rest is pretty much the same. Uh, here, 11K, so I broke down this in the past, but basically I made this little grid. And someone, thank you to the, the viewer that has chimed in in the past to reinforce, hey, Jay, they do not use I, because I think I can be uh, confused for a number one. So 11K, we would look down here. The K signifies October, and 11 is the day of the week. So uh, 11, uh, October 11th, 1963. Uh, that was the 6,233rd, as I said, out of the 31,233. The production, give or take, I mean, it might have been a little off from this, but basically I usually think of August of 63, they would have started making – um, or excuse me, I have my dates wrong here. I apologize. It would have been August of 62. See, this gets confusing to July of 63. So I, that was a typo on my lunch today. My apologies. So I want to go through some of these and then we'll um, look back at the listing. So it's a very nice restored car. I put restored because that, that was some of the wording that was used on the uh, listing. It's a high-end interior. It's a super nice, clean overall car. It does have a Holly Sniper EFI, which is electronic fuel injection system we'll look at. Super clean engine bay. The exhaust, uh, you saw earlier possibly that it was wrapped with heat wrap underneath the car. The exhaust is also redone. Aftermarket fuel tank, which is required typically for an EFI system uh, so that you have a higher volume fuel pump. The paperwork backs up the restoration. There's a 140 amp alternator, upgraded headlights. Uh, it does have a, I think it still has the interstate battery that was on one of the receipts. The convertible top was replaced. New suspension. You can look at image 279 where it kind of breaks down some of that detail uh, in terms of the receipt. Rebuilt steering box. They took that apart and found an issue. The car was nicely detailed, I think, with Griot's Garage. So shout out to Griot's, uh, my favorite detailing product stored in climate cooled facility and then dynamat was applied uh, to the car now dynamat for those that don't know that is like a sound deadening heat resistant type material that's typically placed underneath the carpet so in these cars you know you take out the carpet you vacuum you clean all the floors if there's any little spots that have to be fixed you work on that then you put the dynamat down then the jute as it's referred to uh, the padding if you will and then uh, the uh, 
the the carpet goes in there. And I apologize if you can hear some of the background noise. The dog is barking here, and I can't do anything about that at the moment. Now, what I will tell you is I look through these photos a good amount, and I will tell you that like this car, and typically most of them are not perfect. I will... 100% reinforce that, that 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 usually is a true statement. I get, you know, you can always find little flaws, but I think the amount of work and effort that was put into this car is really nice. It's really hard to tell. I'd like to see in person, you know, again, I, I just gave you that little caveat. You know, things aren't going to be perfect if you look at the bottom of this fender. It's hard to tell there. Um, is there something going on? But certainly when you look at the receipts and you read through those and you see how much time and effort and detail just into, we started working on the car this week. Here's what we accomplished. We did all of this. You know, we did that. It's a lot of work in this thing. Uh, we could see here, uh, typically these bumpers are not going to be perfect. You know, you could see a little bit of stuff here. A lot of times you can polish and get this out. Um, I was actually just working on a, a project um, taking care of little kind of surface rust like this. Uh, the headlights you'll see in the receipts, again, they've been changed out to more of, they refer to it as like a European headlight. But bottom line is there's multiple retailers out there on the market that are selling these type of headlights now. And it, it excuse me, it is night and day, pun intended, difference um, from the regular bulbs. I still have the regular bulbs in my 64. It's tough to see at night. And the 65 that I bought from Robert, it has upgraded lighting, and it's w way easier to see at night. Now, I don't want to go through every photo because, again, I know this video is going to be a tad longer. But the detail in the photos is fantastic. And this is fantastic. If you can't travel to this car, I think this is one of the best listings that I've seen on Bring a Trailer. And I want to give huge kudos to the people that comment on Bring a Trailer in this website in general they do a great job of really showcasing uh, these cars. And it's a win-win because it can bring more money, which is great for the buyer or, excuse me, for the seller. But it's also good for bringing a trailer. You know, they want their um, their clients to be happy. Now, I want to give a huge shout-out to DBS Customs. Okay, Jeff is a sponsor at Lincoln Attic Podcast. And we can see right here, this is a DBS Customs tank. I always talk about going to deviouscustoms.com. You can buy these tanks from him, and that would have been required for the EFI system that we'll see. I've talked a little bit about in the past the differences in the convertibles versus the sedans. Being that this is a convertible and the deck lid is going to open backwards um, or you know, the reverse way that the hood opens, uh, you'll see that these are the two pieces here that allow for the hinges to come back. So those are some of the minor differences. And again, I try to include some of those uh, minor um, items when, when I go through these. We know in 63, the deck lid was slightly changed to kind of give it a little bit more room. And you can kind of see some of that here. That was called out in the brochure. And that would help for, you know, folks putting luggage, dare I say, in the trunk. Super high-end uh, top. You know, these may or may not be your colors, but I will tell you, I, I just think it looks great. And they put a lot of time and effort into it. Now, I'm not a huge fan of this, the way they wrapped the exhaust, but I will tell you in, in my 64, the exhaust is pretty close to the floor, and you will kind of feel some of that heat. So certainly, I think just with Dynamat alone is going to help repel a lot of that uh, heat from the exhaust. But the one thing I will tell you, and you can see it in some of the photos when you stand back, you end up seeing that wrap, whereas if it wasn't there, you wouldn't even notice the exhaust, of course. Someone pointed this out. It does have the 64, 65 wheel covers. And I do uh, I do get a little confused sometimes because I know they're slightly different than 66 and 67. Uh, but I, I, off the top of my head, I think these are the 64, 65. Um, if I'm wrong, please comment because I always appreciate when you guys chime in. But bottom line is they're not the one, twos, and threes. Uh, 61 was it's by itself. Uh, 62, 63 was, you know, the same, and then 64 uh, and 5 were different, and then so on and so forth. But these are definitely not 63, which we understand. Okay, I'm going to click out of here. Let's get to the really, really good stuff. So um, we'll watch a video in a few minutes about the uh, interior, which, again, is stunning on this car. Uh, you'll see, I've talked a little bit about this on where the VIN plate 
is in the different years. Uh, I think it was 63 they ended up changing it from this position here. So this is like you're getting ready to step in the car, and this is looking down on the lower uh, portion of the door jam. That's where you'll see it. I think in 63, eventually they move it later in that model year to the door jam. Uh, but I, again, I kind of tend to get that a little mixed up. There's still what, what I'm what I'm assuming is on the floor mats. They just never peeled the the covers. They had them in the trunk or wherever. So there's still the protective coat there or um, uh, plastic. And we know that these are not the correct seat belts. But I think most people would argue and say any seat belt uh, is good for safety. But certainly, if you wanted to kind of change those up. This leather in the car is really stunning. And to me personally, when I've seen so many custom Lincolns over the course of time, I look at this car and just go, you know, it's really, really, really well done. Uh, it's not 100% factory. Totally get it. But I look at it and say, again, a job well done. Another thing that I often talk about is on these pods, you could take the quadruple zero wool, steel wool, that you could buy at a hardware store and some of the Brasso and you can polish this. Well, guess what? They've already done that. Someone has. And what it does is for over the course of time, I can't tell you how it happens or if it was just what was sprayed on top of it. It almost looks like a clear coat and that quadruple zero wool will basically just wipe away as you polish. And that's what's been done here. You can see this stuff looks really, really good. We'll go through a few more photos here, looking at the AC, the radio, AM, FM, we can see the piping, uh, and let me know what you guys think. I mean, do you like the interior? Is this a car that you would anticipate, you know, wanting to own? Now, I, I will tell you, I'm not a huge fan of those seatbelts, as I kind of alluded, but it is what it is. You can always change that out. I mean, I look at some of those things and go, you know, most people are probably going to stuff them in the seats, especially the rear passengers, and you're never going to see them. Uh, but you can always, there's different people that make uh, the seat belts with the Lincoln logos in them and things like that. Uh, someone else could chime in too, because I always tend to forget this. So this car also has the electric vent windows, and this confuses me. I think it was in the 62 model year. They were mostly uh, with a crank right here. And then there was the automatic option that was available. I forget if that was late 61 or late 62. But this has the automatic vent window, and that's what these two front switches are for. Uh, these, of course, are the front windows, and these are the rear windows. Uh, if we take a look at the trunk, uh, we'll see this looks like all new lines. I'm sure the receipts will back that up. I got to a point where I read so many receipts I couldn't read anymore. So... Um, there certainly could have been a couple that I missed. And a lot of that, I think I got confused because I'm pretty certain some of them are duplicates, which I could understand uploading that many images. I could see where someone would accidentally upload maybe the same one twice. What I could see here is a super clean engine bay. You typically will not see engine bays this clean on these Lincolns. They did a great job. The presentation is there. The work is there. This is, this is a nice car. They, um, one thing that a lot of times you'll see that's broken is on this expansion tank. A lot of times like this piece will be broken or you won't see this is if it ever did overflow, what's supposed to happen is the, the coolant will come out here. And then this kind of goes down to near where the engine blocks at. And the thought process is that's going to drop, of course, right on the ground. There is one piece missing here, but most people do not put them on their Lincolns or you just take it off. And that piece um, hooks on here with the little wing nut, and it goes down around the exhaust manifold. This is, of course, on the driver's side. And that would uh, I think that helps for cold starts, but this car doesn't need it. It's got an EFI system being very, of course, nitpicky at this point. Now, I will tell you this. The DSO, if you've been paying attention to some of my commentary, the, um, this is a California car. This air cleaner has, and this is perfect that I can show you guys this and ladies, uh, it has this piece here. So what should be here is this oil filler cap. I don't see it here. There should be um, a, a, a hose, a line, if you will, that connects from here to here, and that had to do with the California emission. So this is more of a, a rare air cleaner. If you have a California car, 
you know, look to see if you have this. If you don't, these are getting harder to find. If it was me and I bought this car, I would change the cap and I would put the line on there. That's what I have on my 65. Uh, we can see, let me zoom back out. Um, just a few small things have been done here. You'll see a lot of times, you know, a little bit of wire loom. That's going to tie into maybe some new battery cables. This has an aftermarket radio, if I recall, in the glove box. There's a couple small things. You know, you see a zip tie here. You see uh, some wire loom, basic stuff. The big thing for me is it does still have the single reservoir. I think many of you know how I feel about that. You really, in my opinion, would want to change this to a dual master cylinder. And that's going to ensure that if your master cylinder went out, you would either still have your front or rear brakes. Uh, for a car that's got this much in it and it's not 100% factory correct, I would assume, you know, go, go that route. Uh, they, they go the extra mile here. They show the compression test. So this is fantastic. What they've done is they've hooked up a little deal here that goes in place of the spark plug and they can check the compression on the engine. Just reinforcing to you how much effort has went into this car. Underneath, again, this is not going to win maybe a concourse show in terms of the presentation because it's mostly painted black. But to me, it shows that someone kind of got underneath this thing and cleaned it and it made it look good. But at the same time, they're not trying to put lipstick on a pig. Uh, to me, I, you know, coming from the car world, I love seeing a car underneath this where you can kind of take your finger and run it across and it's not really dirty. It's just all kind of detailed to a certain extent. It does still have the front drum brakes, which was key, uh, is, was factory, I should say, in 63 and 64. There's a bunch of underneath photos. On a lot of these cars, you'll see up underneath this area, you know, they'll be very oily and things like that. If you look at the receipts and you see how much time and effort the uh, the folks that worked on this car put into it, you'll, you'll definitely see that um, they did a lot to it. Uh, here we can see the exhaust was redone. That's a huge thing. I mean, if I'm assuming this is stainless exhaust. Uh, even if it wasn't, if you were to go locally and have someone, a local muffler person, exhaust guy, if you will, do the exhaust on a car, you can easily spend fifteen hundred two grand, depending on how high end you want to go. So it looks good that all of that's done. We see the rear shocks in here. It looked brand new. And then you've got that Devious Customs tank. Here we get another photo of the VIN plate and then just showing some of the stickers. Now, I will call out as we look back and wind this video down, I will call out that if you take a look here, it looks like, you know, this shouldn't be painted. You know, there's a bunch of little things. This stuff does not bother me whatsoever. I look at this car and I see the full I see the full package and I go, it it is that nice. Now, key call outs. The car's not 100% original, so it's it's not a deal breaker to me. I think this car is very nice. It's going to appeal to a lot of people, and I think it's fantastic. During the paint job, the door latches, as I mentioned, were painted. I don't mind it. I'm pretty sure in all the Euro Lincolns that we love that it was like that more of the, um, the silver metal color. One of the receipts shows uh, Dexron ATF, automatic transmission fluid. I know we could start a war over this debate and I've said this before almost everybody in the Lincoln community will tell you that you only use type F on the steering pump as well as for the or, or for your power steering fluid as well as for the convertible top now John Cashman and others have reinforced you know the earlier year Lincolns they did use brake fluid for the hydraulic top so if it was something that you had an earlier year Lincoln and the stuff hadn't been updated yeah, we can have a conversation on the hydraulic top fluid. But this car has all new lines, so I don't think they're talking about the hydraulic top. I think they're talking about the transmission. I've seen some people try to argue, no, you could use blah, blah, blah. Listen, I'm going with the John Cashmans, the Chris Dunn's, the Blair Farmers, the people that have worked on these cars 40, 45 plus years. I'm using ATF, uh, or excuse me, uh, Type F, F ATF. Again, that was on one of the receipts. I'm not saying that's in the car, but I did mention it. I, I did notice it. Uh, was the steering column rebuilt? So I want to show you this, okay? Uh, and then I'll show you one more video. So stick with me, and I'll tell you what I think this car is worth. Now, there, let's see. I think it's this one. What I'm going to do is I'm not going to show you the whole video. This Avant, 
uh, place. They, again, I, I believe, maybe they're the owners. I think that they're brokering this car. Uh, reminder, okay, they get in this car, they put the top down, and I'm not playing the sound right now. I get it. I watched this earlier. They do get out of the car with the car running. So here's my public service announcement. I'm not saying anything bad about these folks. If the steering column has not been rebuilt in this car, do not ever do that, okay? For what they know, maybe it has, or maybe they. a lot of people don't think about it. They'll go, hey, we're doing a video. Start the car, run it, do your thing, get out of it. Don't do that in these cars, the reason being. These steering columns, not just the Lincolns, some other Ford cars, go on YouTube, trust me, look up car stuck in reverse, and you'll see cars that were stuck in reverse going in donuts, okay? That's usually not what happens. If this car jumped in or, I say, fell into reverse while it's idling, what's it going to do? It's going to drive straight back to it hits something. I've talked about that at links. And, again, very well, you know, the owner might chime in or, um, you know, the folks that made this video. I'm not, I'm not hammering them in any way. I'm just reinforcing to the viewer. Uh, if you don't know, be very careful. Hopefully the steering column was rebuilt. We just don't know 100%. Now, in this video, this is a driving video. I'm not going to show you the whole thing. I could tell you, I don't know if they, they, they probably mounted a GoPro. So when I was watching this video, it does get a little jittery, which you're seeing a little bit of that bump there. Um, I would tell you that this car is so nice. Like, when you, when you watch this, you might be like, wow, that doesn't look right. It looks like it's bumpy because the iPhone has such great stabilization. Don't judge this video or the driving experience 100% by this video, because I can tell you, looking at the receipts, it has an entire new suspension. I mean, this car probably rides as good, if not as good as the day that it ran or drove off the lot back in good old late 62 or 63. So those are a few things I wanted to call out. And then lastly, I'm going to show you guys this little bonus. So um, I'm not going to play the um, the audio because I would have had to select that whenever I shared my screen earlier. Actually, yeah, I'm not going to play the video. I'll link to this video if you want to check it out. This is J.E. Robeson Service, okay? And this gentleman did the interior. And he goes on to talk a little bit about it. He knows way more about this stuff than I do. And I will tell you, when you look at this interior and you look at the craftsmanship in it and you look at the high-end materials and what the client wanted per the, you know, the kind of the, the voiceover information video that this gentleman gives, it reinforces that, again, you may not like the piping. I get it. You may not like the carpet and some of those things, but this interior had to have been a good amount of money. I mean, uh, I, I know people that easily pay five to 10 grand to get their interior, if not more, in their Lincoln. This is a high-end interior. They, they, they kept it very... Uh, to, I would say, you know, to kind of the original feel. Uh, this is one of my least favorite things. Oops. The fact that I can't, um, the fact that I can't uh, control what I'm doing here. So let me go back here. But I, I wanted to show you this because you wouldn't be able to see this um, in a listing. That is one of my least favorite things right there. And that is the heel pad. So, uh, I know most of you say, well, you're never going to see it. You're going to have your floor mat over it. I get it. But when I had watched this video, which, by the way, I watched this video many, many months ago before this car was even for sale. Um, it's a very nice car. So what I'm going to do is stop sharing my screen and close this up. So I, I can't thank you enough for watching this video. I really appreciate it. Um, I will tell you this, please, please, please follow this on Bring a Trailer. I think this car, now that it's at 75 grand, I was going to say easily going to break 100, and then here I am going, this car is worth way more than 100 grand. I'm thinking 120 to 135,000. I think it's worth more than that, but that's my gut feeling right now. Let me know what you think. Thank you for all the support, and stay on the rise, everyone. ODB. We out of here.